All right. And, and, and I'm going to change order here because I got something else. I got another email from Ron DeShane. And this is an interview since we uh, Tony's name came up. Um, I was going to talk about this later on, but we're on the subject. He's done an interview again with this time with the ringer.com. Oh, <laughs> and, and you know who that they, is, right? I have no earthly clue. The home of that shoemaker idiot who makes up stuff and pretends he's oh, a historian. <laughs> well, I thought it was just that because they put Tony Khan through the ringer. Um, apparently Tony did an interview about the origins of his love for wrestling. And Ron writes uh, a, a little synopsis of this thing and then has some quotes. I thought we this is Tony explaining how he learned to book. Would you like to hear some of this, Brian? Yeah, I saw this article, but I have not read it, so this will be new to me. Well, in talking about his childhood experiences with wrestling and the internet, Tony up opens up in a big way, confirming something many of us have long suspected. Tony just sees AEW as a continuation of his fantasy wrestling booking and believes that Dynamite has been in existence since 1995. Article starts with Tony confirming what we all knew his parents hated wrestling. Quote, my dad took me to that first show, but then I didn't go to see another live wrestling show for probably five years after that. I tried to push countless times to e either see shows in Champaign, Illinois, or in surrounding towns. I never really got through to my parents. They were not supportive of it. So they didn't want to take him to buy a ticket to see a goddamn live show when he was a kid. And now his father's bought him a wrestling promotion. All on the theory that, well, I'll get to see my son be happy spending the money I'm going to leave him before I die. <sighs> Tony talks about the Attitude Era. And he says, I really enjoyed it, and as I went through puberty and matured, I think the wrestling business went through its own crazy growth spurt as I was going through mine. So he thinks that the Attitude Era, which we've established now with 20 years of hindsight, was actually the start of the downhill slide of the wrestling business that it has never recovered from was it going through a crazy growth spurt. Puberty, if you will. And then Ian, uh, the Ian Douglas is the author of this. Oh. Apparently not the uh, shoemaker fellow. Yeah, let me stop. There's Ian Douglas is a, is a good writer. He's actually written several wrestling books and he knows his stuff. So I, when I put down the ringer, it's not about Ian Douglas. He's very good. It's about the, the fucking cobbler. The cobbler that runs the thing. Okay. And then Ian asked about e-wrestling, fantasy wrestling. And Tony went off talking in detail about how fantasy wrestling shaped him as a wrestling fan and as Booker. Tony has been fantasy booking dynamite since 1995. Quote, In 1995, I started doing an e-wrestling show called Saturday Night Dynamite, and then it moved around over the next many years. At one point in time, it was on Monday night, but at one point, it was also Wednesday Night Dynamite. Then I used that name Dynamite for many years. And it has always been a steady thing. I relaunched the promotion with a new territory, new wrestlers, and new stories every several years. I wanted to try something different. The one thing that was always the same was that the weekly show was always called Dynamite. Another quote. He said, wait, hold on. So oh, okay. Because like I had my G.I. Joe Wrestling Federation. I'm a little older than Tony, but... I had all my G.I. Joes, I had my baby faces, my heels, I would book it, I would write out the cards, and I would circle who won, so I remembered what the big events were, and I would move on. But he's... Well, it, it, but hold on now. I'm older than you. Yeah. So I had the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. It's not and as good. Then, and then there was, there was another line, I'm trying to think of what the toys were. Big Josh was one of them. He was a lumberjack. And they all had the thing you could push on the back where they would make the baba chop motion. The three and three quarter inch G.I. Joe is the most perfect 
figure ever created. No, no, no. These, for these were bigger. These these were like six, seven inches tall. They're not good for wrestling. And but well, they but when you put them against the bigger heels, the Vikings. See, they had some the uh, Vikings. Like, they had back in the sixties. I had these foot tall Norse Vikings with shields and swords and everything, and beards, and they were big heels. So I'd put the big heels against the young, good-looking baby faces with the fucking baba chop fucking button, and there you go. And and I would write down cards with all the names of all the great wrestlers in the business. And it didn't matter what territory, because since I'm just writing this down in my room, I can make all these matches and I can envision who might win or not. And I was 12. And even if you do it when you're older, it's... Did you think about having a Viking group in OVW to relive your youth? No, no. And I didn't put any body with a kung fu grip in smoky mountain wrestling either because i was an adult at that point and i had actually been in the business but i'm uh, continuing on another quote it was probably how old is tony khan 38 or 39 okay it was probably around 2011 when I wanted to do more great wrestling matches every week, so in my fantasy wrestling league, I created a second show. Incredibly, that was Rampage. But was he doing... This is what I don't understand. In his fantasy wrestling league, is it just something he did by himself that no one knew about, or is it something he was actually posting somewhere online? Wait, wait, no, wait, no, wait. We're going to get to that. But also, 2011, if Tony is 30, let's say he's 35 years old, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, he's 20 fucking four. He's the son of a billionaire, and he's involved with the running of pro football teams and whatever the fuck else, and he's still... He launched a second fantasy show. Where does it, does this guy sleep? He's 40. Has he always been whatever on whatever the fuck he's on? He's 40 years old. Okay, so this was a 29-year-old guy. All right. I actually had a third show that never came to fruition, but it was kind of fun, and it was called Tuesday Night Tag Team Fight. It was called Roads to the Top. <laughs> I had these different shows, but Dynamite and Rampage were always the primary shows. I've done Dynamite since 1995 and Rampage since 2011. Tony credits e-wrestling for getting his reps in as a booker. Quote, in e-wrestling, you can get ideas and try stuff out. I was a really young kid. I'm not saying it was impactful or that you can jump straight from that into the wrestling business, but it was definitely a fun way to get your reps in. If I wanted to go into the heating and air business, can I just start fixing pretend air conditioners? You know, the thing we still don't know about Tony's fantasy booking, and I say this seriously, looking at Dynamite and what it is, did he just book kind of like a Japan style of seriousness where it's just matches and matches mean something leading to other matches? Or did he ever do angles or anything? Because Uh... the angles that happen in AEW are usually the ones that the wrestlers bring in. And then Tony's usually all about just booking guys against one another. Is that what well, his and booking they, was? And, they, and, that's pri- and then they have an interview on the Wednesday night show if they're going to fight on Friday, explaining why they're going to fight on Friday, and then you never hear anything about it ever again after they fight on Friday. But more, there's more. Tony says, and here to answer your question from earlier, Tony says that writing for an audience of three people helped prepare him to write television. What? There was a quote. There was a guy who passed away years later who was in the fantasy wrestling league I was in with my regular e wrestling friend. And I remember him saying this so well. He said that we were writing for an audience of just each other, but in a way, we were writing for 10,000 fans or 5,000 fans that were in the arenas of these imaginary shows. Somehow you can still tell when stuff is over or not over with the fans, which is funny because they're not real. But he was right. My other friend and I had never articulated it like that before, but he was right. That spoke to me. Okay. Three people. Him and two other guys. They they were doing this for years. 
And, and finally, one guy finally said, you know, we're only doing this for ourselves. And then it clicked. Well, and then, you know, the difficulties of managing wrestlers that can be prepared for also in e-wrestling as well. Here's another quote. You very quickly start getting the sense when you actually sit down and write shows that you can't please everyone. You can't get everyone you want to use on the show every week unless you're putting 37-hour shows together. Also, everyone isn't going to win every week. That's just not how it works. Yeah, think? And he actually is. I'm pretty sure he probably thinks when he's writing one of these formats, I'm going to try to make all the people on the show happy with what they're doing. Brian asked me how many times that I thought or considered of making an individual wrestler happy when I booked a card anywhere in my life ever. How many times? None! They're happy when they get paid. Of course you're happy if you win instead of lose, except if you're really smart to the business and know that you losing the match will draw a bigger fucking house for the return. But now we're really getting into the minutiae. You don't write shows to make the wrestlers happy. You write shows to make the fans want to see them. And the guys will be happy when they get paid. Or whenever they do get to go over. Or whenever they get a fucking rat. Or whenever something else happens. And some of the guys are never going to be happy. And <laughs> how many times do you think he had to argue with his e-wrestlers about who's going to do a job? How many of his e-wrestlers asked for his wife and various other people to be hired just to make him happy? Well, there you go. You know, the, the whole nepotism thing in e-wrestling I've heard is horrible. But anyway, the article concludes with a comment from the aforementioned Ian Douglas. One thing is already proven to be true. Whether his wrestling audience is real or imagined, and whether the size of his fan base consists of two people or two million, Tony Khan will continue to churn out a steady menu of wrestling content, <laughs> even if some of his detractors insist that his output is hard to swallow. That's a true statement. No matter what happens, he's just going to keep doing this. Yes, and that is the truest thing that we will hear all the live long day today. It cannot be denied he is doing this. <sighs> but I... And I'm just, I'm, and I'll move on. But again, every time I hear something like that, that he actually says out in public, I'm talking, he is Tony Khan, that Tony actually says out in public or in what are supposed to be serious interviews, it's hard to explain to somebody who's not in the business and doesn't have the experience of people over and over coming to them, oh, we're going to start this, we're going to get TV, we got backers, we got money, blah, blah, blah. I heard on telephone with Tony Khan, this guy, the guy that was just speaking about his fantasy booking, and that's why I knew exactly what this was going to turn out like, and I have not been surprised. That was going to be a shit show with a bunch of indie guys pulling everything a hundred different directions, and no structure and nobody in charge, and half the roster is filled with people that he thinks are his friends. Until it's, you know, convenient for them not to be, instead of a real attempt at doing something professional. This is the guy that I was talking to on the phone, and everybody wonders why. I said, I'll be over here. I knew the way it was going to turn out, I knew who was involved, and wouldn't you know who won the pony? Everything is happening pretty much according to plan. <laughs> 